Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to do this. So the basic premise is that you start with a scene and then zoom out to reveal that it was on a device the entire time. Or you could do the exact opposite. You could start with the scene and then zoom in to whatever you're looking at. Either way, the process is actually pretty simple, and we can do it all inside of Premiere Pro. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so let's take our two shots that we have here, and we have our first shot, which we want to make look like it's on the screen of our second shot. And it's important to know that when we shoot our second shot, so that we can have it playing during the actual filming. Having it actually playing on your screen or device for the camera to see is important. But if you really wanted to be ambitious, you could do a classic screen replacement. For more on that, check out this video that we did on how to do a screen replacement. Okay, so we have our two shots here, and we need to create the illusion that we're zooming out from one to the other. So the first thing that we need to do is line up our footage so that they occur at the correct time in sequence. For this, it's easiest to put the first clip on top and to drag the opacity down to 50%. This way, you can see both clips at the same time and watch them through to make sure that the timing is appropriate. Next, once you've got that down, take your top clip and you're going to add an effect to it. This effect is called Transform. So drag and drop it onto your footage and we're going to use this effect to take our footage from this size to match the framing of the screen in the second piece of footage. It's important to make sure that we're doing this with the transform effect specifically, not motion. And I'll show you why in just a minute. So take the first point where you want the zooming out to start to occur, and then set some keyframes at that place. One for position, one for scaling, and if your screen looks like it's not directly facing the camera and it's skewed off to one side a bit, hit skew and skew axis and rotation as well. Okay, so now you have a starting point. Now let's find our ending point. Once you hover over it with your playhead, use the transform effect to line up your footage with the screen in your bottom shot. Again, having your opacity slightly dropped will help this a bit. So decrease your scale, reposition it to make it line up, and use rotation, scale, and skew to get it all to line up just right. It'll take a little bit of trial and error. And you don't have to get it absolutely perfect, but just close enough so that if you added motion to it, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And so if we play back, you can see that it looks kind of terrible. It looks like we've got our shot just hovering down to match the next one. Well, that's because we're only half done. We've still got to take the second shot and match the framing. This is easy though, because we've already set our in and out points for the first clip effect. This means that we know where the effect finishes, so use that end point for the second clip and do the whole process in reverse. So add the transform effect to your second clip, and go to the ending of your first clip's keyframing. Set the position, scale, skew, and rotation keyframes at the end on the same frame as the top clip stopped its movement. Then go to the first frame where the clip starts to move and then keyframe your bottom clip to scale up to match the framing. And now with that, you should have this. It's getting there, but we're missing a little bit of that realism. But that's because we haven't added our secret sauce yet, motion blur. There's a neat little trick that you can do with the transform effect instead of motion. And it's this. You take the shutter angle and set it to 180. Then uncheck this box here that says use composition shutter angle. This will now allow Premiere to take the motion that you've input into this effect and use it to create a realistic motion blur for your scene. Make sure to do this for both transform effects on both pieces of footage. It will take a lot of computing power though, which is why it's best to have this feature off when you're doing your trial and error testing to start with. But now that we've lined everything up, we can turn it on. And if we render out and play it, we can see that we get a realistic zoom blur to really sell this effect. Awesome, it's so close, but there's still something off about it. And that's the fact that our first shot is still playing over top of the screen. 
If we tried to replace the screen and line it up perfectly, it would be super time consuming. So we're just going to fade out mid zoom so that we hide the point at which we switch from one clip to the other. A little bit of editing magic. Now even though that we're done with the visuals of this effect, the final finishing touch is to add a bit of an audio whoosh to make it feel like the camera is really being whipped through the air. When it's all said and done, you're going to have some slight imperfections in your effect, but because it's moving, when we play it at full speed, those imperfections are hidden by the motion. If you wanted to play it out longer, you can do this by simply moving both sets of ending keyframes for both clips back to a new ending point. And similarly, you can make this effect faster by moving them closer together. And one of the benefits of this is an increased ability to hide your transition. And guys, that's just been a quick overview of how you get this effect to zoom in or out of a device screen. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you guys like this video, check out all of our other tutorials here at MotionArray.com. And for those of you here on YouTube, as always, consider subscribing and click the little bell icon so that you never miss when we post. Thanks so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Thank you.